a historic agreement this week. The United States and Canada reaching a deal on a new modernized trade agreement to replace the 1994 NAFTA pact. The market surged early in the week on that news. It's going to be a manufacturing powerhouse and allow us to reclaim a supply chain that has been offshored to the world because of unfair trade issues. It's an agreement that removes uncertainty for our manufacturers and investors and improves labor rights for all North Americans. And joining me right now, a giant in the world of business, Home Depot co-founder, author of the book, I Love Capitalism, Ken Langone, here with us right now. Ken, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. So this new trade agreement is called USMCA. That's U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, replacing NAFTA. Good idea. What were your thoughts when you saw this new deal? I think the big thing is it brings the trade deal more into balance with Canada and Mexico. Historic perspective. When Ross Perot ran for president in 1992, one of his themes was the giant sucking sound from Mexico when they hadn't passed NAFTA yet. Any deal requires modification from time to time if they're long enough. I think what happened here is a realization that it couldn't stay the way it was. And, and frankly, President Trump took the initiative by saying, well, for years, they've sat down, we've got to fix this, and they said, we'll do it next year. And it goes on and on and on. He finally said, boys, enough. Right. Now, you don't want to have a military war, so you had a trade war for a moment. And I think both to Canada's credit and to Mexico's credit, they realized that we had some validity, a lot of validity, to our point of view about what needs to be fixed. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, the, uh, the thing that I find disturbing in this whole thing is I'm excited about some of the things Trump is getting done. Very excited. I don't think most career politicians would have had the guts, frankly. And they proved that by all these years past. They didn't do it. They didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, he said, and by the way, like it or not, he's supposed to represent our interests, we Americans' interests. America's president. This business about the whole world, he wasn't elected by the world. He was elected by us to protect us, to defend us, and to get represent our best interests. So yeah. there, there I feel go. very good about you, the you, deal. You, you make a, a really important point. And here we are with a backdrop of a very strong economy. Absolutely. This, we just heard the jobs numbers. Uh, they were weaker than expected on, on Friday. But nonetheless, the, the month of August was revised up. July was revised up because of the policies right. that are encouraging job creation. And the biggest thing of all, Maria, to me, is not the tax bill. The biggest thing is the regulation modifications. Not deregulation, regulation modifications. Some of these regulations were absolutely without any basis of need. None. You know, I think it's these outcomes that you mentioned, 4% plus economic growth, uh, judges on, on the bench, uh, North Korea coming to the table. Mm -hmm. These outcomes that are very positive from President Trump's policies are driving his detractors crazy. And they are going insane over it. I mean, we had Chuck Grassley on Mornings with Maria mm -hmm. this week, uh, the Senate Judiciary uh, Chairman, in the middle of this uh, mm -hmm. Brett Kavanaugh fight. Mm -hmm. And listen to what he told me about what he's seeing right now. There's some evidence, but it's still 32 days away, so I don't think you can count too much on it right now, but seems to be a lot of sympathy for Kavanaugh. A lot of things have come to attention. Seems to be moving people more in the red direction instead of the blue direction. Uh, and I hope it continues. And I think that the battle cry of Republicans all over the country for the next 32 days is ought to be remember uh, Kavanaugh, remember Kavanaugh. And, and he's saying remember Kavanaugh because of the way this has gone down. These accusations that w could not be corroborated, FBI investigation, they did seven of them, of Brett Kavanaugh. And then this, these ambushes, Ken. What has happened to our country that we're ambushing people that we don't agree with? Well, Maria, let me tell you what concerns me broadly. <clears throat> Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal had an had an op-ed piece around the movie To Kill a Mockingbird. Remember that Gregory Peck, great movie. There are two periods in the history of humanity that I think are absolutely tragic, <clears throat> disgusting. Prior to the Civil War in America, in America, if you were accused of a crime in the Deep South and you happened to be black, 
It didn't matter what the facts were. You got hung. Wow. That's part of, unfortunately, that's a dark part of our history, but there it is. And then in the 30s, <clears throat> in Germany, whether you did something wrong or not, <clears throat> the chances are if you were a Jew, you were convicted. I hope all these people understand <clears throat> that if, if the results of their behavior is for Brett Kavanaugh not to get confirmed, we're saying that kind of behavior is not only okay, it's effective, it works. Right. When you encourage bad behavior, you will get bad behavior. The bigger issue to me today is not Kavanaugh and whether he's qualified or not, I feel very much that he is, and I'd be thrilled if he became a Supreme Court Justice. The tragedy is <clears throat> the way this thing has been handled in the context of him as a human being and his wife, and think of those two daughters. I know. Coaching, coaching kids. You, you know, uh, we've got to remember, and by the way, this nonsense about how he behaved, his demeanor, let me tell you something. How would you behave if you were accused of such... How, how did I behave? When Elliot Spitzer, that dirtbag, that evil man, okay, when he came after me and Dick Grasso for no valid reason, the Court of Appeals of the State of New York said he had no standing in that case. I was interviewed by Fortune magazine in my office, and I thought I had an understanding with Fortune about what license they would take with that interview. Be that as it may, I was quite vocal, quite colorful, and quite salty, if you will. Translation, I said some very ugly things uh, in terms of what's considered to be good language and not good After language. After you were accused. Uh, there was nothing in my life, I say to people and I mean it, forget my wealth, forget my success. The only thing of value I'm leaving my three sons and my grandchildren is my reputation. And Warren Buffett says it all. It takes a lifetime to make it. You can lose it in five minutes. I wish I'd use different words, but I'm blessed to know I had inside me the anger and the determination not to roll over for Mr. Spitzer. Mm. I know exactly how Judge Kavanaugh feels, and I would have reacted the same way 